As we all know, the MMA world has been dominated by the UFC for many years now. But over the years, there have been many fight promotions to try and make it in the world of MMA. In today's clip, we will be taking a look at the top 3 fight promotions and what their downfall was. Starting off the list, we have Elite XC, which was owned by Showtime Networks and Pro Elite. Elite started on December the 14th, 2006. This organization were one of the first to have women fight on their card and kickstarted the career of Chris Cyborg, Gina Carano and Shayna Baszler, as well as notable male fighters such as Robbie Lawler, Nick Diaz, KJ Noons, Jake Shields and Antonio Silva, as well as the notorious Kimbo Slice who the organization came crashing down around on October the 4th, 2008 at Elite XC Heat. Elite XC's biggest rating draw, Kimbo Slice, was knocked out just 14 seconds into his bout with Seth Petrozelli. Petrozelli served as a last-minute replacement for MMA pioneer Ken Shamrock, who got injured on the day of the fight and was unable to compete. The unexpected outcome of the fight drew a great deal of attention and subsequent comments by Petrozelli that he was offered a monetary bonus to employ certain techniques during the fight. Come in, take a piece of the pie, and in it, they don't give a fuck if they destroy the whole sport. That's fucking illegal. Raised questions of undue influence by elite XC representatives in fights. This resulted in the parent company Pro Elite incurring significant debts and with no investors or buyers on the horizon, the November 2008 event was cancelled. This combined with the Florida State Athletic Commission launching an investigation into the Slice Petrozelli fight, Pro Elite announced on October 20th 2008 that they would cease operations and this was ultimately the end for Elite XC. For number two, we have Affliction MMA, which was actually a clothing company, but decided to branch out into the world of organized fights. Some of its most notable fighters include Fedor Emelianenko, Andrei Arlovsky, Josh Barnett, and Vitor Belfort. Unfortunately, when Affliction announced its arrival to the fight promotion game, all UFC athletes were banned from wearing any Affliction apparel. The promotion cancelled its third event just days before the show due to Josh Barnett's positive test for banned steroids, and soon after the organization fell apart, citing low pay-per-view sales as the main reason. For the final one, we are travelling all the way to Asia in the Pride Championship. Out of all the organizations on this list, Pride is the one that challenged the UFC for the hold over the MMA game. Pride managed to secure pretty much most of Asia as fans, however, there was dark and dangerous forces lurking behind this organization. The organization ended up growing so big, Dana White would send his number one star Chuck Liddell over to fight in Pride's middleweight tournament, in which he would lose to Rampage Jackson. The downfall of Pride would come when Pride and the Yakuza invited Fedor's management to a meeting in a hotel room to discuss the future of Fedor. In the meeting, Fedor's management was forced at gunpoint to sign all rights to Fedor over to Pride and the Yakuza, and receive no payment from any of Fedor's bouts. This would lead Fedor's management to go to the police and inform the police and the world of the dealings he had with Pride and the Yakuza ultimately scaring off and forcing investors and TV stations to pull their support. Pride was eventually sold to the UFC and dissolved with most of the top talent moving over to the UFC, thus securing and dissolving of Pride as a fight promotion organization. As always, if you enjoy the content, please leave a like and subscribe for more MMA content.